Hi, how are you? Hello, I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Can you tell me about your skill set and the number of years of experience you have? Uh, yes, I have four years of experience and my skill set includes uh, Java 8, Spring Boot, uh, Microservices, Angular, MySQL database and PostgreSQL database. So I've worked on the microservices architecture as well. Okay, so do you have a real-time hands-on experience on microservices? Yes, I have designed uh, applications in microservices in my current organization. Okay, can you share your PowerPoint? I have to design one architecture. Yeah, I have shared my uh, PowerPoint. Okay, let us consider I have to design a e-commerce application similar to Amazon or Flipkart. Okay, okay. it will be an e-commerce application. So can you tell me what are the services which can be used inside this shopping cart service uh, uh, e-commerce yes. application? Correct. So I'll uh, start by using a search service, search is where we provide search functionality. And uh, after that, I'll also have a recommendation service where based on the current search pattern, I do recommendation and give those recommendation uh, to the user. Then I'll have a wishlist service. Wishlist is where you want to buy something and you add to your wishlist and you can buy that thing uh, later. And after that, I'll also have a payment service or a first the cart service. Cart is where uh, you add some items before you uh, check out. So these, these are the services I can uh, think of initially. Okay. And what kind of database you are going to use for this? A database strategy, I use uh, one database per service. So my search will have one database, my recommendation will have uh, one database and so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, for search, I am going to use a relational database and for a recommendation, I can go for a non-SQL database, something like uh, Cassandra or, or MongoDB or DynamoDB. Okay, so how do you decide which kind of database to be used, either SQL or MySQL? Uh, if, if there is some structure in the data, for example, uh, my cart, cart will have some structure because um, in cart I'm going to add some products and uh, those products belong to a user. So there is a structured data that I can think of, uh, so I can use a relational database in this case. For recommendation, uh, it's more of non-relational data where we have, uh, we have uh, now, for example, there are two products, how those two products uh, are associated with each other. So that kind of data I can uh, put in non-relational database. So if it is structured, I can go for SQL. If it is uh, not structured, I can go for uh, non-relational database. Okay, so you can use any kind of data for your individual service. Correct. So one database per, uh, per service. Okay, fine. And also wants to access the information. So how this information will be accessed by use, uh, your user? So are you going to provide the IP address of each service to user or is there any other approach by which user will be able to access all this information? Yeah, so these four services run on uh, machines and those machines have IP addresses, but I cannot share these IP addresses with the user, that is the UI. So what I can do, I can add one additional layer uh, in front of this, and I can call this layer as uh, your API uh, gateway. So API gateway will sit in front of all these services. And as and when the API gateway uh, get the request from the uh, front end, which is your uh, user interface, then those requests will be uh, forwarded accordingly to other services like this. Okay, so what are the functionalities that can be uh performed by your API gateway? Uh, common functionalities uh, like your rate limiting or authentication, your authorization or caching some of the responses uh, that can happen in API gateway. So authentication and authorization are majorly performed in your API gateway along with uh, rate limiting. Rate limiting is where there are multiple requests from your user interface uh, and uh, you want to uh, limit the number of requests per minute uh, you can perform that logic in your API gateway. Okay, let us consider there are n number of requests which are coming frequently for your search service. Okay, okay so how do you handle this situation if your service is not able to uh, handle all these requests at one go? So what will be the solution for this? Uh, what I'll do, I'll uh, deploy multiple instances of search service. So if there is a lot of load on my search service, then I can have uh, two or three instances. So in this case, I have three instances on of my search service. 
So I can deploy multiple or more instances if the load is high on one of the services. Okay, so in this case, how the API gateway is going to identify the search service which is uh, needs to be invoked? Okay, so API gateway will take help of service discovery. I have one more uh, layer in between this and here is your uh, service discovery. And service discovery is where uh, it knows the IP addresses of all the services. So there are three search service and this service discovery will have IP address of all the three services. So this uh, discovery and my API gateway will communicate with uh, service discovery and that in turn will give the address of your search service. And then I can make a call to the uh, respective search service. So you are going to use service discovery. Which service discovery you have used in your product? Uh, in my project, I have used uh, Eureka, uh, Eureka Service Discovery, and uh, I have also used Console in my previous project. Okay, okay, fine. So you mentioned you are using card service, payment service, right? So let us consider you have added all the products which are uh, you, which you are uh, you are going to buy, right? Okay. And now uh, your payment service is not working. Okay, payment mm -hmm. service is down. So what will happen in that case? So how do you uh, tolerate this kind of fault? Okay, so uh, consider there's a payment service and uh, card service calls my payment service to complete the payment. So the request comes from API gateway to my card service and then uh, card service has to call payment service for me the actual payment. But the payment service is down, correct? Uh, is this the question? Yeah. Okay, I can- Yes, correct, uh, payment service is down. Right, I can add fault tolerance logic in my card uh, service and there are various methods of adding fault tolerance logic. One is through Hystrix, I can use framework of Hystrix or I can use resiliency 4J here in cart. And uh, if a few calls to payment service fails, then I can uh, return the default response or something of the sort. Um, payment service unavailable at this stage or try to perform payment later. I can use Hystrix or a resilience project to break the circuit. Okay. So here uh, uh, you are going to provide API gateway as a single point of contact to your customers, right? So right. what will happen if your API gateway is down? Uh, API gateway is down. Uh, uh, API gateway is a single point of failure. Generally in cloud, API gateway never goes down. But consider an example, I have deployed API gateway on my own machines. So I can uh, have one more instance of API gateway. So there will be two API gateways. One API gateway is running on one machine and uh, other API gateway is running on another machine. And I can have um, a load balancer in front of this. And load balancer is highly available load balancer. So there is a load balancer here. Yes. And uh, this load balancer will uh, uh, balance the load between your API gateway. Whenever the request comes, uh, there are various strategies of balancing the load. Uh, for example, a round robin is one of the simplest strategy. So I can balance the load between API Gateway 1 and API Gateway 2. And I'll give URL of uh, this load balancer to my front end application, which is your Angular application. Okay. Now here, uh, your card service is going to communicate with payment service. So how this communication happens between the services? Uh, generally, this communication can be synchronous or asynchronous. If it is a synchronous communication, it happens through a REST template. And to discover the address of payment service, I can use the same service discovery. And once the address is discovered, I can make a REST template call uh, using REST template from Spring Boot application. Okay. So how do you monitor your microservices? Uh, monitoring microservices can be done through various things. One is ELK. Uh, Elastic, Logstash, uh, and Kibana, ELK uh, stack. Or uh, I can also uh, use Splunk. Splunk is also a framework by which we can uh, uh, monitor the, the micro. This is for logging, sorry. For monitoring, I can use Actuator or uh, Spring Boot Admin. Okay. Okay. So do you know some of the endpoints which are provided by Actuator? Mm, actuator, I'm not sure, but there is something called as uh, slash uh, health endpoint where it gives uh, if it gives 200 okay then your uh, service is healthy otherwise it is down okay okay and how you are going to design your ui are you going to use react or angular or is there, is there any other technology used for you uh, i have worked on angular so i'll uh, try to make uh, two pages one is for recommendation so that will be one page and uh, 
uh, I'll at the top I'll provide search bar on in which uh, I'll make calls to my search service and for recommendation I can make a uh, calls to my recommendation service and I can also give two more uh, icons for wish list and for cart. So whenever I add something to the cart, uh, the database entry will be made in the in the cart microservice. Okay, okay. I guess I'm done from my side. Do you have any question? Um, so uh, what is what is the uh, position uh, for uh, which uh, what is the job description is it like design core systems or is it working on functional use cases yeah the role will be equivalent to a technical lead so it may happen that you need to design an architecture for your project okay perfect i got the answer okay yeah thank you yeah thank you bye bye bye, -bye.